evening, sir. Very lovely. Evening. How do you do? <laughs> what? Well, chaps, we survived the war. Let's hope we survive this place. I don't think we will, sir. We drink too much of this stuff. Wouldn't it be lovely, Major, to get back home, eh? Have a lovely pint of beer at the Georgian Dragon. <laughs> yeah, do you know what, Major? I do believe I'm homesick. You could have gone home on the last troop ship, Joe. But if you remember correctly, we were somewhat involved with several young ladies at sailing times. That's not why we missed it, Holly. I don't think any of us really wanted to go home anyway. Oh, we still had some money then. Yeah, that's another thing, sir. Might I inquire what your plans are now that you haven't? I'll use yours, of course. I've no desire to go back to Cambridge to teach a lot of pimply-faced undergraduates the mysteries of the ancient civilizations. I always had a dream of exploring this part of the world for myself, putting some of the knowledge I gleaned from books into practical use. I know its language and its customs, but if you add it all up in terms of raw experience, I know absolutely nothing. At least you had a settled life to go back to. I never even finished my studies. Well, there you are, Mr. Lee. You could go back and study under the Major. I don't think a school desk would fit anymore. You know, it's a funny thing. But during the desert fighting, I was never more at peace. The place had an atmosphere. Something I've never felt before. Well, you could still go home, Joe. There's another boat next week. Oh, no, I couldn't, sir. Not without you, sir. I realize now that we're not in the army any longer. You can't really afford a manservant, but one day you will be able to, sir. And just think of all the back pay I'd have to come. Hmm. War seems to have shot away all our roots. I say, chaps, just look at that. unpleasantness this evening. We've had four years of fighting. We'll just have a nice evening off, shall we? <laughs> Volunteer operation. No assistance needed. A few years ago, I'd have given you a run for your money. Now I think I'll just concentrate on the visual entertainment. Excuse me. But this is not the place a beautiful young girl should be alone in. Tell me, the man you came in with, is he? A friend. He has business to discuss with the owner of this club. He left you to discuss business? Yes. Then uh, suggest the gentleman be taught a lesson in manners. Would it not be good manners for you to introduce yourself? Forgive me. My name's Vinci. Leo Vinci. And mine is Stain. Who's Stain? Names as beautiful as you are. How's this? Oh, oh, goodness. Are these girls athletic, sir? <laughs> Joe, take your hat off. What, sir? Take your hat off when dancing oh, with the ladies. <laughs> Your friends, they are enjoying themselves. It's all right for them. They enjoy the noisy nightlife. <laughs> and you? Mm hmm on occasion. But a beautiful girl is not to be shared, even among the best of friends. There's 
Isn't there somewhere we could go less noisy, less public? If that is what you wish. Not home to meet mother. It's not far now. Leo, quickly go back. What's wrong? Please, go back. <laughs> is exact. I would never have believed it possible. You have done well, Ustain. This will count well for you when we return to our own land. Forgive me, my Leo. It was not my wish to bring you here. Forgive me, but who are you? Have you not seen me before? No, I don't think we've ever... I am Aisha, who some call she who waits. And you? Do you know who you are? Of course, Leo Vinci. But that's all I'm sure of at this moment. Even in that you are wrong. Then I leave it to you. You tell me what is right. What is right has been foretold long ago. That he would come to her again, 
from out of the darkness of the past, that he would possess her and all that once could have been his. You, who choose to call yourself Leo Vinci, will you come to me again? Yes, but why not now? of lost souls through the mountains of the moon. A long and dangerous journey. At its end, everything you desire will be yours. Power, riches, glory. And you? Everything you desire. This will be your guide. Go now. You must. Is it not he? Only time will tell us that, Bileli. In face and form, there is no doubt. If it is truly he, come again. You must survive the perils of the journey. And I pray that my waiting will at last be over. Holly, wake up. Hmm? Hmm? Who's that? Huh? Oh, what the devil's the matter? What time is it? It's late, but I want to talk to you. Oh. To tell you what happened tonight. Oh, look, if I have to listen to the stories of your love life, I'd much rather hear them in the morning with a nice cup of tea to steady my nerves. I think it's a bit unsporting of you anyway to gloat. Get off. It's not that, Holly. She was only the bait. Oh, I always was one for a spot of quiet fishing myself. Do go. Here, while I tell you what happened, look at this. Get my glass, will you? Thanks. I say, where'd you find? 
find this? After we left the club, I was ambushed. Knocked unconscious. There you are, Holly. Exactly as I described it to you. Shall we? Well, I don't see why not. Judging from what you tell me, you seem to be pretty well known around here. Do you gentlemen know anything of the Arab laws of trespass? Well, never do you. Yes, I do, sir. I don't think you ought to stay here. Oh, Leo, your friends seem to have deserted you. You really should take more water with it, old chap. Believe me, Holly, I'm not mad. This is the right house, and she was here. Whether you believe the rest of my story or not, there are two things that haven't disappeared. The ring and the map. They're real enough. Let's have another look at that map. Thanks. How much of this could you decipher, Leah? Enough to know that the focal point is the lost city of Kuma. Of where, sir? Kuma. It's a legendary city, supposed to be somewhere in the mountains of the moon. Hundreds of miles to the south of here. Thank you, sir. That's strange. Here, let's see that ring again. This insignia is of the High Priest of Isis. That ties up with the legend. How? The legend deals with a small band of rich Egyptians who were banished to die in the desert for a terrible crime committed by their leader, the murder of the High Priest of Isis. I forget his name for the moment, but they were, they were ordered to carry his body and belongings with them. What was his name? Callicrates. How do you see? If the legend were true, but they hadn't died in the desert, and why shouldn't they have set up a camp or a village or even in time a small city that had to live somewhere? And where the ring came from, there could be a great deal more Egyptian treasure. Sure. If it's genuine, that is. It's genuine, all right. It's Egyptian. About 1000 BC. And any museum would give you a small fortune for that. But if that woman knew all about this, then why hasn't she capitalized on it herself? Uh, I don't know, Holly, but why don't we find out? Just the sort of chance we've all been looking for. If we were to find the lost city of Kumar and prove that legend true, it'd be the crowning moment of my life. Horace L. Holly might make a name for himself yet. In fact, we might all be knighted. Oh, <laughs> just imagine, sir. May he stepping into the Georgian dragon. Half a bitter, I'd say. Oh, yes, Sir Job, they'd say. Coming right up, Sir Job. <laughs> then you'll both come with me? Just you try leaving without us. Come on, then. Well, we'll need new clothes, sir. If I've got enough money. We want camels, water containers, as much food as we can carry, guns, ammunition. Mustn't forget your digestive biscuits, sir. I remember what happened last time. Yes, all right, dear. Keep safe, my Leo. I do believe I'm going to be seasick, sir. Oh, 
Have either of you considered the possibility that we might meet some wild Bedouins and get our throats slit? That's if we're lucky. Cheer up, Joe. Oh. Only about another 14 days' journey to go. And that's only to find there was nothing there in the first place, sir. Oh. Oh. I am Aisha, who some call she who waits. It has been foretold long ago that he would come to her again from out of the darkness of the past, that he would possess her and all that once could have been his. Will you come to me again across the desert of lost souls, through the mountains of the moon, a long and dangerous journey. At its end, everything you desire will be yours. Power, riches, glory. And you? Everything you desire. Mr. Leo, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to wake you, sir. You looked as though you were having a lovely dream. Somebody <sighs> slashed our water bag, sir. What? There's some footprints leading through there to a patch of ground that's all been churned up by camels. Anything else damaged or stolen? No, that's a strange thing. Job and I have checked. Did you hear anything in the night? No. Well, we can't go on with just our canteens. There are other water holes on the map. We'll make it. Well, it seems to me, sir, there are those that don't want us to make it. With all due respect, Mr. Leo, I'm not going on no matter what. Last night it was the water bags they slashed. Tonight might be us. Job could be right, you know. The whole thing smells fishy to me. First you're given a map by someone who vanishes without leaving a trace. Then someone tries to scare us from going on. I think we've gone far enough. Holly, wait. You said yourself that if you could find the lost city of Kuma and prove the legend true, it would be the crowning moment of your life. We have to go on. We have to. Well, I'm going on. You can do as you please. You'll never make it alone. I'll make it. Have you told us everything, Leo, or is there something more? Something more? She gave me a map. A map to the treasures of Kuma. A chance to discover the lost city. A chance to gain riches and glory. I've offered you a share in all that. What more do you want? I'm sorry, but do you think you'd ever get another good night's sleep wondering what might have been at the end of it all? You're absolutely right, of course. Never another good night's sleep. Well, I suppose we'll laugh about this one day, sir. Don't worry, Job. We'll set you on course for Jerusalem. I'm sure the camel will do the rest. Well, no aspersions, Major, but I don't think I could have my two gentlemen traipsing about the desert without a proper valet. Why, people would think you were downright common, sir. Here we are, sir. Two nice warm whiskies. <laughs> Thanks, Job.
Leo, I don't know, but according to this map, we should be inside of the mountains by now. Not yet, Holly. Another night's journey. Oh, of course. You travel this route several times a week. It does seem familiar somehow. That's hardly possible, old chap. It's as if something were calling me. A voice from the past, like some sort of inherited memory. Inherited? Who from? I don't know. Maybe my ancestor was an Egyptian merchant who traveled this route. Job. Well, it's our last water until we get to the mountains, so make the most of it. But don't worry, Mr. Leo says we'll see him by morning. Well, what are they going to do then, sir? Spring up during the night? There they are, Holly. The mountains of the moon. Mr. Leo was right, sir. He was, thank heaven. Get up. Good. Good. Come on. Good. Good. Get up, you great hairy thing. We seem to have a reception committee, sir. And I don't like the look of their chairman. us off, Holly. I have absolutely no idea. But without our camels, ammunition and equipment, we're not much better off being alive. Job, see if they dropped in the water bags. Sir. How long do you think it'll take, Leo, by foot? A long way. But we'll make it. I wish I could be as sure as you. How could you possibly know that we'll make it? I just feel it. I just know. Not a drop of water anywhere, sir. Then we'll just have to make do with what we've got. Come on, let's get away from here.
No, my Leo. It's I, you stain. And when I saw you leave the house, I knew that they expected you to undertake this journey. And I also knew that I had to follow you to be near my Leo. I have never been far away. But who are they, this woman Aisha and the man you call Belele? Tell us, Eustain. They come from the city of Kuma. Then it does exist. As a child, I lived there with my father. I was being trained to become Aisha's handmaiden. Then, one day, there was an outbreak of fighting. Many officers were arrested. All were put to death. All except my father. He was given the lowest position to be held by a citizen of Kuma. Overseer to the Amahaga. The Amahaga? Who are they? The tribe of slaves that lived within the shadow of the Ethiopian head. Slaves to whom? To Aisha. But why are you staying? It has been so for all time. That's all I know. Ustain? Does this map mean anything to you? Yes. It shows the way to the city of Kuma. Great moment, Job. Yes, sir, if you say so, sir. My Leo, you must not go on. Turn back now. I have food and water. Enough for all. No, you stay. There's no question of turning back. I must go on. There is nothing there but evil and death. Go back to the world outside. I will come with you. Come on, Holly, we're on the home stretch. I've never seen a man with such determination. I wonder what it is that keeps him going. Well, whatever it is, sir, I wish I had some. Pack up, Job. We don't want him to get there first. He'll only pinch the best apartment. I shouldn't worry too much, miss. He's a very headstrong young man, is our Mr. Leo.
I'm glad I'm not an educated man, sir. That's what makes you go off on a damn fool search for lost cities. Isn't that exactly what you're doing, Joe? Well, yes, sir, but I'm too ignorant to know any better. Mr. Holly. He's very weak. He has lost a lot of blood. Get on. Burning up. There's nothing to kill the infection. Do you reckon he'll be all right, sir? An even chance, I'd say, Job. Stan, how far is your village? Only a few miles, but it's a difficult journey. Would they receive us? Why aren't you sure? Except for my father, they are a primitive people. They know nothing of the outside world. Major? Wait. Moi, so do Baba Ua. Leo, to Tafanya, Mama. Like to warm me hard, Joe. Well, as long as they don't start trying to warm it over that fire, sir. This is my father. In the name of the Amahaga, I welcome you. My daughter tells me that you are in need of rest and food. And the one she calls my Leo has been wounded. Dead Amulos, you know where. symbol of power of she, the queen of Kuma, known to us as she who must be obeyed. Then this image must mean a great deal to the queen. Whose is it? It is the face of Callicrates, once high priest of Isis. Why did you choose him? That I do not know. Your daughter told us that the Amahaga are held as slaves by this queen. What's to prevent them and you from escaping? She has an army of many soldiers, of which I was once one. Her wisdom is limitless, her anger boundless. Perhaps one day there will be change, for hate is festering in the bosom of these people. Hate which could become strong enough to defy the fear they live with. Already they begin to dispute my authority. I cannot hold them much longer. Then why do you try? I have come to look upon them as my own children. I do not want to see them perish. That's a pretty song, isn't it, miss? They've taken the coming of your friend as a sign, a sign of deliverance. You mean they want him to lead them? If 
they believe the gods will lead them if they offer up a sacrifice. A sacrifice of great enough importance. Joe. Yes, sir. Take an arm. This is one party we'll leave before it even starts. Come on, Leo, boy. Boys, come yes, on. Sir. Come on. Once more, these people have dared to ignore the orders of she who must be obeyed. I shall take 15 of the young men to appear before her to answer for this crime. <laughs> My name is Bilele. 
High Priest to Aisha. I have come to take you to the city of Kuma. You tremble, Bileli. A man who fears your wrath and does not tremble is a fool, O Queen. A man who does not fear your wrath and yet does not tremble in your presence is not a man. You have reasons to fear? I fear for you. With what cause? The fair one. His life hangs by a thread. If he dies, then we will know for certain that it is not he, for it is written otherwise. 
Yet it is strange, for has he not survived the ordeals we set him? That is true, my queen. But we had not counted on the intervention of Ustain, the daughter of Hamid. A mistake for which you should pay dearly, Bileli. And more, you allowed her into the city. Why? Without her, I might have brought you only a corpse. Tell me of this. She had a way with him, to comfort him, to soothe him. You tell me her love has kept him alive? I spoke not of love. Then you're blind and stupid. Do not dare to test my patience too far. In my eyes, you hold no special favor. High priests die as easily as other mortals. I say only what must be said. We must be rid of her. I speak again, at whatever risk to myself. To be rid of her would be simple, but unwise. If you are to prevail, it is the fair one who must banish her, who must turn against her. He is a man of soul and conscience. These you must destroy. I misjudged you, faithful Bileli. There is wisdom in your words. For I know you are truly he, and that which was written long ago will be fulfilled. Through the mountains of the moon, a long and dangerous journey, everything you desire will be yours. Power, riches, glory. And you? Everything you desire. I never thought I'd see that face again. I'd forgotten how you looked without a beard. I'd have been buried with it, but for you. Can I ever thank you enough? Can this really be the pathetic wreck we brought here on the stretcher? How are you, Leah? Good to see you on your feet again. Fine, Holly. Mr. Enns. Hello. I, I will go now. You were quite right, sir. He did get the best apartment. Well, gentlemen, we made it. We found the lost city of Kuma. Well, if I may say so, sir, finding it is rather like finding a tiger in one's bed. It's a very exciting discovery. No, there's other places. Do we do about it? Mm -hmm. Finding an ancient ruin or unopened tomb is one thing, but a fully occupied city is quite another. And apart from the discovery itself, what else can we lay claim to? You don't think, sir, they might be prepared to hand over a few treasures for our trouble? Oh, I doubt it, Joe, but you will always ask. Yes, sir. Well, dear, I must tell you something. There may be more in this than any of us think. This queen has a symbol of her power. It's a medallion with a face inscribed on it, and that face is an exact... Hold it. Ah. Bulele. A remarkable recovery, Mr. Vincey. And now I think it is time for your friends to leave you. You all right, Leah? Sure. Come along then, Job. We can do with some extra sleep. Oh, but, sir, them beds are as hard as rocks, sir. Which is precisely what they are. Well, that's the point, sir. Go I'll... to the spine, old
let me return this ring to you. No, it's no longer necessary, for now it is rightfully yours. Rightfully mine? Look at it. Does it not carry the insignia of the High Priest of Isis? Yes. But how does that make it mine? It was once worn by Callicrates, and shall be worn by him again. But he died over 2,000 years ago. Yes, and I've spent the years since his death waiting for him to return, to be my love again, my only love. And I have not waited in vain. Are you asking me to believe that you have lived for 2,000 years? Am I not here? And are you not Callicrates reborn? You ask me to believe too much. But it is true, and you will believe. Come. Sit down. Do you remember your death, my love? My death? The death of Callicrates, high priest of Isis. Close your eyes. Float back on the sea of time and remember. 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 The encampment is on the banks of the Nile. Night is cool. A smell of soft perfume fills the air. The moment is one of love. I see Aisha. I feel a sudden pain. And I die. I die. You see? You do remember. thousand years ago. I cannot believe. It's not possible. Time, my love, is but a sea eternal. We drown in it many times and are washed ashore again and again. But I have never drowned in it. I was given the secret of eternal life and used it out of fear of losing you, Callicrates. No, no. I'm not Callicrates. I'm... Leo, Leo, Vinci, you must believe that. It's enough for you now. In the days to come, there will be further proof. Just don't make them like that anymore, sir.
Come in, Mr. Holly. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Please, come in. Oh, thank you. Who were they? High priests like myself to Aisha. But with one difference, they are dead. Will you tell me something? This woman, Aisha, why do you all do her bidding without question? It has always been so. Yes, but why? She's only a woman and alone. You are men and many. And like all men, we are born, we live a span, and we die. But she has been here forever. She is like the mountains, like the desert. Changeless, ageless, deathless. That I cannot believe. In your fear, you have accepted the impossible as truth. No one lives forever. And no one was born to be the vassal of another. You know, and feel this too. I've seen it in your eyes. Your body does a bidding, but your spirit cries out to be free. Is that not true? Each one of us has his own destiny to fulfill. And yours, I suppose, is to fill the next alcove. I can't believe you're such a fool, Bulele. No, Mr. Holly. I am not such a fool. idea what this is about? No, but we seem to be the guests of honor. Well, you mean like Mr. Leo was at the Amahaga village, sir? Bring those who dared to break my laws before me. You are aware of my orders, that all strangers are to be brought unharmed to me. You disobeyed these orders. You prepared to sacrifice one of these strangers. I am she who must be obeyed. There is only one penalty for those who do not choose to obey. A lesson in obedience. Teach them. We must stop. 
Nice. How far do you think we'd get? Don't forget, sir. They were going to take a knife and fork to Mr. Lear. <laughs> I wish to be alone with our guests. Come. There is something I wish you to see. Was that barbaric execution necessary? It was necessary. In God's name, why? As a demonstration of my absolute power. How else could I hold my soldiers and these pathetic creatures as my subjects? How else but by instilling fear and terror into their very souls? But nothing is gained by fear and terror. Is your world so much better? Your world where men kill each other in their millions in the name of freedom. Your world that has not long to live. A few decades only before it destroys itself. Then, what will be left? I will show you. This will be left. Complete Egyptian city. I can't believe it, sir. Was there ever a greater civilization than the Egyptian? And where did it end? In this volcanic crater. But my world will not end. It will begin again. Here. And you will be its queen. You're not the first person in history to have such a dream of supreme power. And I don't expect you'll be the last. Leave us now. Yes, ma'am. Nothing I will not forgive in you. Nothing. Tell me how it was with us. And how you found this place. My punishment for your death was to be banished to the desert with my followers. After months of wandering and near to death, we met an old man, a mystic. He brought us here, where we multiplied and built this city, then watched it fall into decay after the plague had come upon us. Then all these people, they have lived with you through all the years? No. They have lived and died as mortals do. The old man who came out of the desert showed only me the secret of eternal life. He knew that I was the one in the world chosen to partake of that life magic. And now, there will be another. 
it's still possible. Do you think I would have waited for you endlessly, knowing that you would be taken from me again after a few brief years? Come, I will show you what no other living mortal has seen, the flame of eternal life. See how the tread of my feet has worn the stones away? No one else comes here or knows of this? A few know. The high priests through the ages. But none dare to enter. They know it would lead them only to their death. Do not be afraid. It will not affect you until you walk into it and bathe in the flame. Walk into it? The heat's near scorching me now. You are right. To enter the flame now would be suicide. But there are times when the flame turns cold. And such a time will come shortly for you. Might it not be better to take things as they are, as we find them? You and I, as we are now. No. To take me now would lack complete fulfillment. We stand each side of a barrier. You in your world of change and decay. I in immortality. Be patient. Just a short while longer. Then cross that barrier to me. We shall be together for all time. Aisha and Callicrates, as it was meant to be. the chance? I suppose there's a time in everyone's life when the idea of immortality seems very desirable. But now, at my age, I'd have to give it a great deal of thought. What's age got to do with it? You'd stay as you are. That's not what I meant, Leo. What one would accept eagerly at your age doesn't necessarily have the same appeal at mine. It's the age of the mind that's important, not the body. See, you're young. You're still on the threshold of life. The joy of living is not to be denied. But to know that it'll be there for all time, without change, life at a standstill, it's not quite the same thing. Have you ever been in love, Holly? Oh, many times. And truly, once. Would you then have hesitated? Without doubt, no. But I might have lived to regret it. See, a deep, sincere love will last most people a lifetime, but even that changes from the frantic yearnings of its beginnings to a quiet, unspoken understanding at its end. The physical side of human love wasn't designed to last forever. But her love for me was. It's already outlived the span of 50 lifetimes. Why shouldn't it go on? And your love for her? Perhaps that, too, has stretched back through the ages. If you believe that, then maybe I'm wrong. But it must be your decision, Leo. And if you do accept, I only hope you'll never live to regret it. to believe that those crumbling ruins are all that remain of what was once a great city. It 
it can be made to rise again. With you as its master, its ruler, its king, and Aisha, its queen? Perhaps. Is that what you want, my Leo? How can I know? No man in the history of the world has been faced with the choice I face. If you love her enough, you will do as she wishes. As I would do, whatever you asked of me. You realize there is evil in her. Still, you desire her. Above all else. If it were only your love for Aisha that keeps us apart, I will be happy to remain in your shadow and ask no more. She has bewitched you with promises of power and grandeur. While I can but offer you my heart and unending loyalty. I know that these are not enough for you. So I must leave. But my love will never die. And I shall carry your memory with me forever. Where will you go? Back to the Amahage. A simple people with simple beliefs. Yet stronger by far than anything that exists here. Goodbye, my Leo. You stay. and has done you no harm, why should you want to kill her? I'll be rid of her. If you really believe he is Calicrates reborn, then remember, your jealousy and cruelty have robbed you of his love once before. Are you prepared to take that risk again? No, Holly, I'm not prepared to take that risk. That is why she must die. This savage has tried to take from me that which is mine, has always been mine. He is still a mortal man this side of your barrier. Kill her! And prove to him that you're no better than a primitive savage yourself. And I don't believe you'll ever get him to cross that barrier. If he is not prepared to accept all that I now offer him in atonement, then let him be truly revenged for the greatest of all wrongs that I did him. Bring me the dagger.
With this I struck you down. And only this can end my eternal life. Here beats my heart. Be avenged in full. And save the life of this savage. Are you so certain now, Holly? Look at him. He is no longer the man you knew. He is nothing. But he will become a man again. You and your servant will leave my kingdom forever. Come. You knew I couldn't do it. I had to know that nothing, absolutely nothing, would stand in the way of our love. of the new moon strikes the flame and you, Calicrity, stand before it. Then, and only then, will the flame grow cold. Your decision is made? Yes, but I'm afraid. Of what, my love? That I am not truly he and that the flame will not grow cold. How can you still doubt? You are Calicrates. And I will show you the final proof. shell that once was Callicrates, High Priest of Isis, Lord of the Lions. You have served your purpose in keeping alive his image in my heart. Go to rest, for now you have returned to me.
Holly. I've come to say goodbye. Is there nothing I can say to make you change your mind? No, Holly. Nothing. I want you to have this. It will prove that the crowning moment of your life was no lie. Thanks. Goodbye, Job. Take care of the Major. Yes, sir, of course I will. Goodbye, Mr. Lear. Goodbye, Holly. All my life I've dreamed of finding a city such as this. Now that I have, I'd like to see it destroyed and all it stands for. Let's go home, sir. She who must be obeyed returns your daughter to you. A warning to all who choose to displease her. Mr. Leo, sir. No, it won't. Thank you. It's not that we haven't been happy here, but, well, we've got a long way to go, you know. Enter this place. 
I have served you faithfully my entire life. Have I not earned the right? You have no rights. Get out. No, my queen. I have but to enter the flame to become as you are. Who are you to say that I, less than any other man, have not earned the right to become immortal? Only he can enter, for he is Callicrates. He is but a face, a face that I chose in the image of the one that you worshipped. But he is still only as other men. He is able to die. <laughs> together.
What happened, Holly? For God's sake, what happened? There can only be one answer. A second time into the flame, the fire takes away what it had given. And me? What about me, Holly? I loved her. And now to live forever without her. No. Get back in the flame, Leo! Immortality. When it comes back, it'll find me waiting. <laughs> 